Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about Yara rules and how to use them or to create your very own rules. So we'll be taking a look at that shortly. Right, so let's start by understanding what Yara rules are and how we can use them, right, for identification, signature-based identification, right? So uh, Yara rules are used to identify samples based on specific strings or binary data. Now, if you remember in my previous video, we talked about how attackers or malware authors will usually uh, include uh, or remove a particular pieces of data or strings, uh, you know, they'll add or remove strings to the malware sample and this uh, in turn changes the cryptographic hash, right? Now, that is a very simple thing that they do and it really does not affect the functionality, which is why Yara rules can be uh, can be very, very powerful in the sense that if, you're, if the attacker preserves the functionality, then uh, we can bet that a lot of the content will remain the same and we can use various uh, Yara rules, however specific they are, for future detection, right? So I'll show you this in a second. And this is what uh, antivirus companies uh, use, or this, this is primarily what they do, is they generate various rules that, of course, uh, are then used to, uh, uh, you know, for signature-based identification. Right. So this is the structure of a Yara rule. Now, I will be leaving the Yara documentation in the description section because Yara is a very extensive tool that we will be covering, but I will be covering in stages. So right now we'll be, we, are, we are simply focusing on it, uh, you know, from a static analysis perspective. Right. But we'll be taking a look at it as we move along. So if you want to get a head start, you can check it out for yourself. Right, so the structure of a Yara rule or the syntax is as follows. You have the rule, right, which is your, um, the, you have your rule and then you have your rule name. Uh, you then have your meta, which is not really required, which then gives you a description of the, uh, of, of the, of the Yara rule. So you can, again, add information in regards to its functionality. You then have strings, right? So strings, uh, which again, you're specifying can either be hexadecimal or strings themselves. Um, uh, or rejects if you want and again this will all make sense in a second and of course you can uh, you provide these variables uh, or you specify them with the the dollar sign and then the name of the variables right so very very simple stuff here and then finally you have the uh, the logic which is wh where you have your condition here so your conditions can be used to again give you results that you're looking for so in this case, uh, we want um, we want Yara to print out the, uh, the 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 we want Yara to print out an output uh, in the event that A or B is present, right? Now this could be strings or hexadecimal, and I'll show you how to specify them both, right? So I'll be seeing you uh, in the virtual machine where we can get started. All right, guys, welcome back to Flare VM, where we can actually get started creating our very own Yara rules, right? So we're going to be using the same sample we've been using throughout the static analysis section, which is the credential harvester or the password stealer. And we have it right over here, right? So what we are going to do for the purpose of this video is we are going to create a Yara rule that detects the various URLs or identifies a piece of malware based on those particular URLs that it connects to, which we already took a look at. Uh, it connects to three uh, Russian uh, command and control centers or URLs that are quite interesting. And we'll be using that to classify this piece of malware and also to identify it. And you'll see how this works in a second, right? So if we drag the unpacked um, sample into PE Studio, right? And we took a look at this when, uh, when we were exploring uh, the strings, right? So we'll, we'll just wait for this to load up and hopefully it does that really quickly because this is not the most important bit right here. Um, so we'll just wait for this to complete. Uh, you can also take a look at the indicators. Uh, whatever you want to use for your rules, you can use it. Um, so if we if we just take a look at this one right over here, so we have three URLs that it connects to, which again we can sort of uh, we can we can guess as to as to what their functionality is. But we're going to assume that these are the command and control centers, uh, you know, through which uh, the, the, the this piece of malware is being controlled or where it's sending all the credentials back to. So we are going to be using these three URLs as a, 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 sort of the means of classifying or identifying this malware. Right. So what we're going to do is let's create our, our first Yara rule. So to do this, uh, let's open up Notepad++, right? So it's very, very simple. You can also use Notepad or any uh, other IDE that you want to use. So as I said, uh, the syntax is very simple. We specify the rule. We say rule and then the rule name. So we're just going to give it a generic name like 
uh, creds underscore ru you can use the underscore if you want and you can also use numbers however the uh, the name of the rule uh, sh uh, cannot be started with a number right so we then open up our curly braces here and we'll just open it up like so we'll also add a meta section here uh, yeah we'll add a meta section let's do it right now and we'll say the description of this is going to be uh, we'll say this is going to be a simple uh, Yara rule to detect um, let's see detect Russian and credential uh, harvesters all right so very, very simple rule it doesn't have anything to do with the actual uh, the actual functionality we're simply just describing it so that we can eventually understand what this rule does if we ever want to look back at it right so the next thing we need to do is we need to specify these strings right so these strings again are declared and you can use variables to declare the various strings you're looking for so let's start off with we will have three strings and they'll be denoted by a b and c and then, of course, I'll show you the other various ways of creating these variables and you can define the, um, the strings in, in the form of either, you know, using strings or hexadecimal. So we'll say um, A is going to be equal to and we'll need to specify the first URL. So we'll go back into the strings here and we'll copy the value and we'll say we want uh, you to check for this URL. Uh, secondly, again, we want you to check for the next URL. So we'll just get the second one again. Sorry, let me just switch back here. Uh, copy the value and we'll paste that back in there. And again, we're using quotation marks around this. And then we're going to specify the last one right over here. And we'll just copy the value there and we'll paste it in here. And there we are. So those are, are our three strings uh, that will be we, we want Yara to look out for in any of the samples we use or that in, in any of the samples we want to we, we actually want to identify or classify based on these particular strings right so let's say we find a, a malware sample out on the internet and we want to see if it's related to this particular malware sample based on these three strings or urls we can then use this Yara rule to scan against it right so again as i said this is what antivirus companies use and um you know for signature based uh, detection so now let's talk about the condition or the logic here all right so the the condition or the logic is very very simple to understand of course you have your conditional operators you have and or not right and we can create a very simple condition here by saying uh, we want to detect uh, if all or any of these URLs are being found so that we can understand we can so sort of build a, a picture or get an idea of uh, you know whether they belong to the same fan whether they belong to the same family etc are they russian etc right so we'll say uh, we want a or it can be either a or b or c right so a or b or c and we will just close this up and that should be it right so now when you're saving your your your, your particular yara rule you want to save it as a yara file right so we'll go to my desktop here i'll just save this on my desktop and we'll call this, uh, uh, we'll just call it creds.yara, right? So you need to specify the Yara extension and I'm going to hit save. All right, so now that we have the Yara rule uh, saved here and we've created it, we, we now need to open up a command prompt. Now, I'm using Flare VM. By default, uh, Flare comes with Yara 32-bit uh, installed. And to use it again, we specify Yara 32 and then the help menu, which will bring it up right over here. And this gives us uh, the various options. So uh, we can print the strings, which is we, which is what we want to do. And we also want a recursive scan uh, or a fast scan if you want, but I recommend a re recursive scan. So what we're going to do is we are going to scan our particular sample. Uh, and we're going to use this URL to scan uh, that particular sample. And we're going to see if it, if it, if it actually... Uh, is able to detect uh, any particular likeness right so whether we're able to identify this particular sample and of course it's going to give us the results we're looking for because it's the same sample that we've got these particular strings from so i'm just using this as a basic example right so uh, what we'll do is we will say uh, yara we'll say yara and uh, we of course want to print the strings so we'll say s and r that is recursive and then we need to specify the um the yara file or the yara rule that we want to use which we're going to say is going to be creds.yara uh, we then need the sample and we're going to use the unpacked sample of course and we're going to drag it in here and we're going to hit enter 
and uh, yep sorry we need to use yara 32 sorry about that we we are not on linux here uh, so we're going to say yara uh, yara 32 and i'm going to hit enter and immediately it's going to tell you where these uh, these particular urls are so it's detected that these urls do exist right now you might be saying well how do i know this is true and you know it's just not scanning it based on the sample without that particular rule so if we edit this rule and i just say uh let me just change c to some random text like this and just say save and i'm gonna run this one more time and hit enter you can see that it now only detects the two right so that means our yara rule is working so i'll just get rid of this and, and now let's talk about uh, adding a hexadecimal uh, variable here or a value that we're looking for so when uh, when you when actually looking for hexadecimal uh, strings uh, or data here uh, we're trying to identify based on those uh, on hexadecimal data uh, we can say uh, let's just say we're looking for the mz header right and uh, we'll go back here or well, let's actually drag this sample into the hex editor there we are so let's load it up into the hex editor so let's say we want to identify this piece of malware based on uh, the hex uh, 4D5A, which again is MZ right over here. So again, that's a very basic identification. It can be used to identify PE, uh, PEs, uh, PPE files or portable executables. So we'll copy this. Now, when we're doing this, we do not use the quotation marks. So we'll just call this variable MZ and we will uh, now use the curly braces. Put that, uh, put these values in here and we will hit save right so control s and we can run this one more time and uh, yeah sorry we forgot to include the condition here so we can say a or b or c uh and it has to be a we can say and it has to be a mz it uh, it has to be a portable executable or has to have the mz header right uh, or mz yeah the mz header so we're gonna say save or mz here hit save and we're going to run this one more time and I'm going to hit enter. And there we are. It gives us immediately. So again, the first two bytes. And again, you get the various offsets where you can actually locate uh, these particular URLs. So you can actually locate them. Now, again, as I said, uh, this is a is a great rule. It's a very basic rule that we've created and its job is to classify this malware. Now, you can use any other strings or any other hexadecimal data or binary data that you want to use to classify this malware, right? So this is very basic. So again, I can go back into PE Studio and look for other strings that are related to this particular um, to this particular malware sample. So for example, I can use this post uh, this post request here. So I can copy the value, and uh, we can again create another we can create another uh, variable here. And I'm going to say uh, we'll just call it post, right? And um, we'll oops, sorry, did I copy the actual value here? Uh, yeah, sorry, that is post, and I'm going to hit save, and hit enter, and there we are. So again, we get where all the various uh, where we we get the various offsets where we have HTTP. Again, so get you you get the offsets right over here, so you can actually uh, look for them or identify them, and that's just a simple, uh, simple example of how you can create your very own Yarrow rules for identification and classification. Right, so that is going to be it for this video. This is a very basic video covering a malware classification and identification. As I said, we'll be going through Yara a lot more as we move along. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.